yes good afternoon students i hope you are all doing well uh, we'll be seeing the frequency response analysis right in the class we have already seen the time domain analysis using root locus and raut hurwitz table now we are going to see about frequency response analysis in the we have some techniques bode plot polar plot nyquist plot first thing we start with the bode plot now okay what is bode plot it is nothing but to find the frequency response we already know what is the frequency response nothing but magnitude response and magnitude plot and phase plot together it is called frequency response we know some of the examples of an open loop transfer function g of s you look at this g of s g of s equal to 2 into s plus 1 by s into s plus 2 what are what are the things available here we have a zero at minus 1 we have a pole at zero we have a zero pole at minus 2 come to this open loop transfer function we have a zero at zero we have a pole at minus 1 we have a pole at minus 2 come here we have a zero at minus 1 we have a complex pole if you solve the square plus 2s plus 2 definitely we will be getting a complex pole now look at here we have a complex zero we have a pole at the origin we have a pole at minus 1 we have a pole at minus 2 right so right these are the things we have here now we come here we will look at the basic factors any open loop transfer function will have a constant gain that is the k if you look at this problem what is the gain here 2 what is the gain here 4 what is the gain here 2 here the gain is 1 here the gain is 1 here the gain is 4 right then we have a pole at origin what is the pole at origin 1 by s look at this problem we have 1 by s this so we have a pole at origin we have a pole at origin then we have yes what is yes zero at origin zero at origin okay then we have the pole at minus a that is 1 by s plus a if you look here 1 by s plus 2 1 by s plus 1 1 by s plus 2 okay here 1 by s plus 1 1 by s plus 2 and we have another we, uh, we have a zero at minus a that is your s plus a so that's s that s plus a format s plus 1 So zero at minus one, zero at minus one. Similarly, we may have we may have complex zeros. We have complex zeros here. We have complex pole. We have complex pole. This is a complex pole. So any transfer function will be a will be a component of these things. Any transfer function will have these things. Need not to be all things should be present, right? If you look at the first one, this one, what is present? We have a constant. we have zero at minus 1 we have pole at zero and we have another pole at minus 2 for this problem so what are the things present for the first problem we have a constant we have a pole at origin we have a pole at minus a we have a zero at minus a so these things are present in the first look at the second one what are the present we have a zero at origin zero at origin we have the pole at minus 1 that is 1 by s plus 1 again 1 by s plus 2 for the second problem we have this part and this part and constant okay so if you look at any transfer function we will have these things so our objective is to find each component how they are going to work at various frequencies then if you know such thing we can add that's the essence of bode plot okay so again i repeat we are going to find how a constant is going to change its frequency how a 1 by s is going to change its frequency how a s is going to change its frequency if we can solve these things then our problem of finding the frequency response becomes very very simpler now we will we we'll look at some basics of we we'll take this example a transfer function is given as 2 into s plus 1 by s into s plus 2 first thing we have to convert things in bode form what is bode form It is nothing but it should be in one plus s format. One plus s format. Here you have s plus two. So if you take two outside, I will be getting one plus s by two. That is called Bode form. First you try to make write everything in Bode form, right? So here it is already one plus s. So no 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 need to worry anything. So here yes, I put yes. So it is s plus two in Bode form. I have to take two outside. It becomes one plus s by two. Okay, so this two two gets cancelled out. So one plus s by s into one plus point five s. Now to find the frequency response, very important thing is we have to substitute 
in place of s j omega so g of j omega becomes 1 plus j omega j omega 1 plus j into j into 0.5 omega so we know things becomes complex s is a complex number right so 1 plus j omega is complex j omega is complex 1 plus j 0.5 omega is complex so you know any complex number can be represented in magnitude and phase angle right so we will take the magnitude what is the magnitude of 1 plus j omega it is what is the magnitude of uh, if any complex number i give an example a plus j b what is its magnitude let me say uh, i give a name something like uh, x is equal to a plus j b so what is magnitude of x it is square root of a square plus real part square plus imaginary part square what is the phase angle tan inverse of imaginary part that is your b by a these things we know from our elementary mathematics we know we have to apply these things here here a is 1 here b is omega so square root of 1 square plus omega square for this j omega real part is 0 that is a is 0 only b is present b is omega so square root of omega square come here it is a is 1 b is 0.5 omega so 1 plus 0.5 square omega square on solving we get this right now in Bode plot we will represent the magnitude in decibel okay decibel for that what do you do 20 log of the magnitude okay so 20 log of the magnitude so this magnitude will be coming here we know in logarithm what is the biggest advantage in logarithm is multiplication becomes addition division becomes subtraction as a student you know which is comfortable for you if i ask you say sir if i say division is comfortable or subtraction is comfortable your answer will be subtraction if i ask multiplication you are comfortable or addition is comfortable you would say addition the simple things right so here 20 log square root of 1 plus omega square what is divided by i said division becomes subtraction okay so minus 20 log omega division becomes root of 1 plus 0.25 omega square becomes subtraction of minus 20 log this, this term right so this is the magnitude of the uh, given transfer function then go to the phase angle we know how to find the phase angle, right? What is the phase angle of 1 plus j omega tan inverse of omega? What is the phase angle of j omega? It is minus 90 degree. We have seen in the class, right? Uh, and you know, in phase angle, division becomes subtraction. Okay. What is the phase angle of tan 1 plus j 0.5 omega tan inverse of 0.5 omega by 1? Tan inverse of b by a. Here b is 0.5 omega. a is 1. Since it is the denominator, I put minus sign. Okay. I hope you understood these things, right? Thank you.